So the next topic which we are going to discuss is colligative property. We have already learned that the vapor pressure of uh, solvent in a solution is uh, less than the vapor pressure of pure solvent and the, this relationship is given by the Rolle's law. The vapor pressure of solvent in solution is given by mole fraction of solvent multiplied by vapor pressure of pure solvent. Of course, the change in vapor pressure can be written as uh, vapor pressure of pure solvent minus uh, vapor pressure of solvent in solution and replacing P 1 from here, we are going to get P 1 0 minus x 1 P 1 0, which is equal to uh, P 1 0 1 minus x 1 and we know this x 1 is the uh, mole fraction of solvent. So, 1 minus x 1 is the mole fraction of solute. So, we get P 1 0 x 2. In the binary uh, solution, x 2 is the uh, mole fraction of the that uh, solvent uh, solute and if uh, there is a more than one component is uh, available is there in the solution, then this is the mole fraction uh, of all the solutes. Basically, we are going to add uh, mole fraction of each and every component and then add it and that we are going to call it x 2. So, delta p is directly related to x 2. We can write this as delta p divided by p 1 0 equal to x 2 x 2 is the mole fraction of solute present in the solution and this x 2 can be written as, as we have already learned the moles of solute divided by total number of moles present in solution that is moles of solvent plus moles of solute. Okay. And then doing a uh, uh, subtracting and delta p we can also can write this whole equation as u delta p we have defined up here p 1 0 minus p 1 div uh, divided by p 1 0 and subtracting the denominator from numerator we are going to get n 2 divided by n 1 equal to P 1 0 minus P 1 divided by P 1 and this equation can be used to determine the molecular weight of unknown solute. If we do not know what is present in the solution which sol uh, solute is present, we can use this equation to calculate the molecular weight of solute as following. So, N 2 is the number of moles of solute. So, this is defining the weight of solute divided by molecular weight of solute divided by weight of solution so weight of solvent present in the solution divided by molecular weight of solvent. We already know the information this weight of uh, solvent present in the solution and we can use this information to calculate the molecular weight of solute. Okay, let us do an exercise. Okay. So, this is an example from the textbook. 
the example uh, the I am going to read this problem the vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar okay so for benzene we are given vapor pressure of pure benzene that is p10 at a certain temperature it is 0 0.850 bar all right in a non volatile non electrolyte solid weighing 0 0.5 gram we don't know what solute is this we have we are adding 0 0.5 gram of this solute in uh, in the benzene now how much benzene 39 gram of benzene so we are given mass of uh, solute and we are dissolving this uh, unknown solute in in 39 gram of Uh, solvent and since it is benzene we know the molecular weight of benzene molecular weight of benzene would be 12 into 6 c6 plus h6 that is 6 so 78 so now the vapor pressure of the solution then after of this solution is vapor pressure of the solution is uh, 0 0.845 bar this is a non volatile uh, solute so there is going to be no contribution from the solute so this whole vapor pressure is coming from the benzene now we can just uh, the formula is given right in front of us so p10 minus p1 it's simply point uh, we subtract this and we get 5 into 10 minus 3 bar divided by P1 that would be uh, P1 that is 0.845 and that is equal to weight of solute which is given 0 0.5 gram divided by molecular weight of the solute divided by weight of solvent that is 39 gram divided by molecular weight of solvent that is 78. So, I can uh, calculate the molecular weight of uh, solvent now easily using this formula. So, that would be uh, so, I am going to take molecular weight to other side and bring all the information to other side. This side, so I am going to get 0 0.845 divided by 0 0.005 uh, and, and that is going to give me the molecular weight. So, molecular weight of unknown solute is simply 169 gram per mole. So, we have used this lowering in the vapor pressure to calculate molecular weight of unknown solute. If we have a some unknown pure compound and we want to know what it is and if, if we can find a solvent in which it can dissolve a known solvent in which it can dissolve. So, we are just going to dissolve some known amount of this unknown solute in this solvent and if we can calculate the vapor pressure and that is it we can know this molecular weight and molecular weight will tell may give you some information about what this compound might be ok. So, ok next topic which we are going to discuss is elevation of boiling point and at this point I want to spend a little time to discuss what is phase diagram of a pure solvent. So, ok. Let us see if I have a closed flask okay, and this is evacuated there is nothing in there it is a pure very good vacuum and in this I introduce some of the solvent. Okay, so, I have a solvent and we have learned in the previous class uh, that this solvent is going to evaporate okay, and it is uh, this evaporated the solvent from the liquid phase is going to go into this vapor phase 
and we have learned that that let us say this is a compound A in a liquid phase and goes to gaseous phase and this is a dynamical equilibrium and it will reach equilibrium and at this point whatever is the pressure exerted by this gas on the surface of this liquid that will be called vapor pressure. Okay, in this container uh, we have only the pure solvent and its, uh, uh, its uh, vapor nothing else because we started with a uh, empty flask a evacuated flask. So, this all this pressure on the solvent on the liquid solvent is due to the its own vapor and this is exactly called uh, vapor pressure. Now, if I start uh, increasing the temperature, if I start uh, providing some heat to this uh, system, as I am increasing the temperature of course, there would be uh, tendency, tendency to es um, for the molecule solute uh, solvent molecule to escape from liquid phase into the gaseous phase and every time as a, uh, every time there would be a new dynamical equilibrium as we increase the temperature and the vapor pressure would keep on increasing. And if, we, if I plot simply temperature versus this pressure, pressure exerted by the solvent vapor on the liquid that pressure then I am going to get a, a typical curve like this. So, it will uh, the pressure is increasing as uh, temperature is increased and we start at a point because below this point uh, uh, below this point the uh, liquid will freeze. So, we will get a uh, relations uh, a vapor uh, a curve between solid and gas not the solid and uh, ok. All right, now, so this is a curve for pure solvent. Now, what would happen if I add uh, to uh, if I add a some solute into this? Again, I am going to do the same experiment, and uh, I am just going to measure the pressure exerted by the solvent uh, molecule on the uh, solution but uh, the sol solute which I am have added is uh, non volatile. So, it is not going to contribute to the uh, vapor pressure or to the, the pressure exerted over the sol uh, uh, solution, but now there is going to be decrease in the vapor pressure at a given temperature. If the vapor pressure at a given temperature is for the pure uh, solvent was P 1 0, now it is going to be x 1 uh, p 1. Okay. So, now I am going to just plot uh, this p 1 as a function of temperature. So, this quantity multiplied by x 1 and I am going to get a curve something like this. So, let us say I was at this temperature So, for pure solvent this is the vapor pressure as I uh, added some solute now the new vapor pressure is this and this is basically delta P, where delta P we have just defined is P 1 0 x 2 as our temperature increase this is going to be the delta P and if you keep on increasing the temperature, this is going to be the delta P. Now, what is the normal boiling point? Normal boiling point is when the vapor pressure P 1 0 becomes equal to 1 atm. If I if I have left this uh, uh, this uh, 
container open at 1 atm uh, at the normal boiling point the external pressure and the vapor pressure becomes equal and it will simply boils i mean it, all the this, uh, it will keep on continuously boiling and this uh, gaseous molecule will simply keep on escaping so there would be a complete boiling and it will just uh, everything will escape okay so let's assume that this is 1 atm so this is the normal boiling point so let me clean this figure a little so this is 1 atm this is the vapor pressure at this temperature this is the normal boiling point and at this temperature the vapor pressure is 1 atm and this is the normal boiling point okay now what would be the normal boil, uh, boiling point for the solution the solution curve is this this is the vapor pressure of the vapor pressure curve of the solution now this curve is going to have a vapor pressure of 1 atm at this point and this is the uh, boiling point for the solution and this is the boiling point for solute solvent and this difference delta t is the uh, increase in the boiling point uh, with respect increase in the boiling point of solution with respect to the pure solvent now one point few points to note this curve is i am simply plotting using this information okay so it depends on this curve which is p10 and mole fraction of of so, uh, so, uh, mole fraction of solvent. So, uh, this curve does not depend upon the properties of solute at all and the change in delta t depends upon the property of this curve in fact, the slope of this curve at this point and, and this concentration x 1 or related to x 2, x 1 and x 2 are related simply by x 2 is equal to 1 minus x 1. So, it does not dip, uh, this property delta t as I defined here is proportional to simply the concentration and there is a proportionality constant which is called k b. Uh, which is basically is called molar boiling point elevation constant and this constant depends upon only the properties of the solvent not on the solute as it is very clear from that figure. Okay. So, now we can use this property also to calculate about unknown solute constant k b is specific to a solvent. So, let me write this and now let us try to and this m is the molality of uh, solute in the solution. Okay. Let us do a one example. Okay. Here I read 18 gram of glucose, 18 gram of glucose that is uh, C 6 H 12 O 6. It is dissolved in 1 kg of water, in uh, 1 kg of water. At what temperature will boil? 
at what temperature will boil water boil at 1.013 bar and k b for water is 0 0.52. So, when we are just asked to calculate delta t to calculate delta t I need k b and mol molality k b is given right here and I need to calculate molality. What is the definition of molality? Molality is defined which we have already discussed moles of solute. So, moles of uh, 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 moles of solute that is N2 divided by weight of solvent in kg. Okay. So, to calculate this I need the moles of solute. I am given 18 gram divided by molecular weight of glucose. So, that would be uh, 72 plus 12 plus uh, 96. So, 6, 8, 10, 110, 11, 18, 180 divided by weight of uh, solvent which is water and we have given 1 kg. So, it is simply 0 0.1 molal solution and now I have all the information and I can I have k b, I have m and I can calculate delta t easily. So, delta t is going to be 0 0.52 into 0.1. So, that is 0 0.052. So, initially the water was boiling at 100 degree, now it will boil at 100 point 0.52 degree centigrade. So, now we were given the information about glucose. If we do not know uh, about the solute, let us say we are dissolving some unknown solute, then we can use the same information to calculate the molecular weight of uh, solute. Okay, let us do one exercise. Okay. The boiling point of benzene is 353.23 Kelvin. So, we are given a normal boiling point of benzene that is 353.23 Kelvin. When 1.80 gram of one uh, non volatile solute, 1.80 gram, so that is solute, weight of the solute dissolve in 90 gram of benzene. 90 gram of benzene, so that is solvent. The boiling point is raised to 354.11 Kelvin. Calculate the molar mass of the solute Kb for the benzene. This constant for the benzene is given as 2.53. Kelvin kg per mole. Okay. So, this information is given and now we are going to use the formula which we have already seen that is delta T is equal to k b m. Okay. Let us see delta T is already given that is we are given the boiling point of the uh, pure solvent. This is the boiling point of the solution. So, delta T would be simply the difference. So, difference the so delta T is equal to the difference would be 8. 0.88 Kelvin which is equal to K B. K B is also given 2.53 multiply by molality. Now, to calculate molality the definition of molality is moles of solute divided by weight of solvent in kg. Okay. To calculate the moles of solute, we know the weight of uh, solute which is 1.80 gram divide that by molecular weight of solute divided by weight of solvent which is 90 gram, but we have to use that in kg. So, divide by 1000. Now, we have all the information we just plug in this information in here and we get our equation. So, equation is going to be 0 0.88 
Kelvin is equal to 2.53 into 1.80 into 1000 divided by 90 into molecular weight of the solute. So, we can calculate this. So, molecular weight is going to be 2.53 multiply by 1.80 multiply by 1000 divided by 90 divided by 0.88. So, we are going to get 57.2. So, molecular weight we are going to get is 57.57.5 moles uh, gram per mole. So, that way we can calculate the molecular weight of this unknown solute. Okay. The next topic which we are going to discuss under this subject is depression of freezing point as the we have elevation of boiling point in the same way we have a depression of freezing point and this can be understood by the same diagram which I just plotted. Okay. So, this is the phase diagram between liquid and vapor. At some temperature the liquid is going to freeze and below that we have a phase diagram for phase diagram for solid and gas and of course, we, we can have a phase diagram between solid and liquid. So, at this point uh, the solid or uh, the liquid is going to freeze. If I keep on decreasing the temperature in this direction the temperature is increasing. So, in this direction temperature is decreasing at this point the liquid will freeze and this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent. Now, I have the uh, curve for the solution as I plotted earlier and the curve would something look like like this. So, initially the boiling this was the 1 atm line. So, this was the boiling this is the change in the boiling point and the same way we are going to have a change in freezing point. So, this was the normal freezing point and this one is the freezing uh, point of the uh, uh, of the solution and again this proper uh, this line does not depend at all on the property of the solute it depends only on the concentration and on this line and this how much shift is going to take place will depend on the curvature of this line okay and again we get the similar formula that is delta tf is equal to kf multiplied by molality of the solution Okay, where k f is constant which is called freezing point depression constant. Okay, this is again uh, same kind of formula and this is very important. This is uh, very important for aquatic life in a uh, polar region where temperature can go many degree below the freezing point, we still the water is not going to freeze due to very high concentration of salt in water in sea water and that will uh, that is the reason that aquatic life marine life can survive. Okay, in the same kind of formulation we can do and of course, k f and k b is related to the property of this curve k f related to property of this curve as I said the uh, it depends upon the curvature of this curve k b depends on the uh, curvature of this curve and this curvature is depends upon this curvature will depends upon the uh, 
enthalpy of freezing curvature of this curve will depends upon enthalpy of vaporization and k b and k f has the formula and which can be written as k b is written as gas constant multiplied by molecular weight of uh, solvent multiplied by boiling point square divided by 1000 multiplied by enthalpy of vaporization. And same way I can write K f as R into molar mass of solvent multiplied by freezing point into square divided by 1000 into delta the enthalpy of uh, fusion. Okay. Let us do some exercise based on this concept. Okay. The example is as follows 40 gram of ethylene glycol is mixed with 600 gram of water. Calculate A, the freezing point depression, B, the freezing point of the solution. So, we are dissolving 45 gram of ethylene glycol. 45 gram of ethylene glycol that is C 2 H 6 O 2 in 600 gram of water, 600 gram of water. He is asking delta T f and T f the change in the freezing point and what is going to the freezing point of this solution. Okay. To do this problem, we also need K f and we need the K f of water, we, because we need the freezing point uh, constant, full freezing point depression constant only for the, uh, 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 for the solvent and that is given in this table and that is delta uh, the T f, sorry, K f for water is 1.86 Kelvin kg per mole. Okay. So, now I have all the information as required. So, delta T that is what we need to calculate delta T f which is equal to this constant multiply by molar molar concentration and we need to calculate the molar concentration again the going by the definition molar concentration is moles of solute. So, moles of solute would be 45 gram divided by molecular weight. So, molecular weight is 24 plus 6 plus 32, 36, 62 divided by. So, this is the moles of uh, solute divided by the weight of solvent in kg. So, that is 0.6. So, if I plug in all these numbers 45 divided by 62 divided by 0 0.6 I am going to get okay, I am going to get this as a 1.2 and this is plugged in, in this equation which is 1.86 into 1.2 and I am going to get a final answer as 2.2 Kelvin. So, what is going to be the freezing uh, point of this solution? We know the water freezes at 0 degree centigrade or so this solution will freeze at minus 2.2 degree centigrade. Okay, let us do another exercise. Okay, let me read 
1 gram of non electrolyte solute dissolved in 50 gram of benzene lowered the freezing point of benzene by 0 0.40 Kelvin. So, the benzene is the solvent and the delta T is 0 0.4. and the mass of the solute to is 1.00 gram. So, we so 1 gram of non electrolyte solute dissolved in 50 gram of benzene. So, mass of solvent is 50 gram. The freezing point depression constant for benzene is 5.12 Kelvin kg per mole. So, we are given T f also which is 5.12 Kelvin kg per mole. Find the molar mass of the solute. Okay. So, we are again going to use the same formula. So, we are given delta T which is 0 0.4. K f is given 5.12 and we need the molality. What molality is again moles of solute which is 1 gram of solute divided by molecular weight of solute. Okay, so, this is moles of solute divided by divided by weight uh, of solvent in kg. So, this would be 0 0.05. So, we can use this relation right here and we can calculate the molecular weight. So, the molecular weight is going to be 5.12 divided by 0 0.05 divided by point g, uh, divided by point 0.4. So, answer comes out to be 256. So, the molecular weight of unknown solute is 256. Okay. So, let us do some more example from in text problem. Okay. Let me read the question. Vapor pressure of pure water at 298 Kelvin is 23.8 millimeter Hg. 50 gram of urea is resolved in 850 gram of water. Calculate the pure, calculate the vapor pressure of water for this solution and its relative lowering. Okay. So, we are given vapor pressure of pure water at 290 Kelvin. So, P 1 0 is 23.8 millimeter Hg. 50 gram of urea is dissolved. So, the solute is urea. So, weight of urea is 50 gram. Since we will need the molecular weight, so I am just going to write urea molecular formula of urea that is NH2CO. NH2. So, 50 gram of solute, this solute in 850 gram of water. Is asking first the lowering and the relative lowering delta P by P10. So, we are going to use the formula which we have discussed delta p is going to be p 1 0 x 2. Okay. So, p 1 0 is given. So, that is 23.8 into x 2 mole fraction for solute. So, mole fraction x 2 is n 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2 
and we can ignore n 2 with respect to n 1 that we can see in a minute. So, n 2 is going to be 50 gram divided by molecular weight. So, that is 14 to 16, 16, 32, 48, 12, 60, 60. Okay. And N 1, we have 850 divided by 18. So, you can see that this is approximately order of 1 and this is approximately order of uh, up around 50. So, if I ignore n 2 with respect to n 1, I am making uh, I am uh, ignoring some a quantity 1 with respect to 50. So, this is approximately 2 percent error which is acceptable even though I do not have to ignore just for the making the calculation simpler we usually ignore that quantity and so x 2 is 50 and 2 50 by 60 into 80, 80. So, I put that quantity right here 50 into 18 60 into 850 okay. and let us use the calculator and see what we get. 3. So, the lowering in vapor pressure is 0 0.42 and now what about this quantity? This is nothing but x 2 which we have already calculated that. So, x 2 is right given here. Okay. So, we can handle this problem quite easily. Okay, let us attempt the next problem. Okay, let me read the problem. This is in text question uh, 2.10. Boiling point of water at 750 millimeter Hg is 99.63 degrees centigrade. How much sucrose is to be added to 500 gram water such that it boils at 100 degrees centigrade? Okay, so, this is a problem of uh, elevation of boiling point. So, the boiling point of pure solvent is given as 99.63 99.63 degrees centigrade at at uh, uh, 750 millimeter edge of course one might wonder how come this boiling point of water is changing uh, we know as we go at the higher elevation at uh, some uh, hill station the boiling point of water changes. It boils at lower temperature and that is due to something of the external pressure. At 1 atm, the normal boiling point is defined at 1 atm. So, at 1 atm uh, water boils at, uh, at 100 degree centigrade, but at 750 millimeter at the external pressure water will boil at 99.63 degree centigrade. Okay. And then how much sucrose is to be added? So, we are adding sucrose to be added to 500 gram of water. So, uh, weight of solvent is given that is 500 gram of water such that it boils at 100 degrees centigrade. So, boiling point for the solution is 100 degree centigrade. Okay, so, we are going to use the familiar formula that is delta T is equal to K B multiplied by molality. Of course, the K B is listed at a normal uh, boiling point and we have seen the K B is a function of temperature, but we are not going to wonder, uh, we are not going to we are not going to wonder about that because this is quite close to 100 degree centigrade. So, we are going to assume K B is same for this system and the uh, when the temperature is 100 degree centigrade. 
Okay, so delta T. So delta T is uh, given right here. The difference between the boiling point of the solution minus boiling point of solvent that will give me delta T that is 0 0.37 degree centigrade or Kelvin equal to KB for water. We know it's listed one in one of the tables, and that can we can find it. KB for water is 0 0.52. 0.52 and m is molality so the definition of molality is let's go to our abcd definition of molality is moles of of solute divided by weight of of uh, solvent so, weight of solvent is given right here 500 gram in kg 5.5 kg and the moles of solute. So, we need to figure out what is the weight of solute. So, we to convert the weight of solute to moles of solute we need the uh, uh, molecular weight of sucrose. The sucrose is C 12 H 22 O 11. Okay, so the weight of this would be 144 plus 22 and oxygen 11, 16 into 11, 176. So, this would be uh, 4 to 6, 12, 1, 8 to 10, 14, uh, 3, 342. Uh, so, if weight of solute is uh, w 2 then the moles of solute is simply going to be 342 and we can put that information right here. So, moles of solute is W 2 divided by 342 divided by weight of solvent in kg that would be 0 0.5. We take this information and put it right in here W 2 divided by 342 into 0 0.5 one equation, one unknown, we solve it and we will get the answer. Okay, let us use the calculator 0.37 multiply by 342 multiply by 0.5 divided by 0.52. So, answer comes out to be approximately 120 1.7 grams. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the some problem from the end of the chapter. Uh, so the next problem which we are going to discuss is uh, 2.18. Let me read it out. Calculate the mass of a non-volatile solute molar mass 40 gram per mole which should be dissolved in 114 gram octane to reduce its vapor pressure to 80 percent. Okay. Calculate the mass of non volatile solute. So, we are asked the mass of non volatile solute whose molar mass is given molecular weight is 40 gram per mole which should be dissolved in 114 gram octane. So, mass the uh, solvent is octane over here. So, mass of uh, solvent is 114 gram and the solvent is octane that is C 8 H 18. Uh, and to reduce the vapor pressure to 80 percent. So, if original vapor pressure of octane is P 1 0, then the uh, vapor pressure of solution should be 80 percent of that. So, this is the uh, information given to us. Okay, we know from the Rolle's law that vapor pressure of uh, uh, solution is equal to mole fraction of uh, solvent multiplied by vapor pressure of pure uh, uh, solvent. 
So, just by comparison we know x 1 is equal to 0 0.8 all right and let us see what is the definition of x 1 we need to figure out m 2. So, the definition of x 2 x 1 is moles of x uh, 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 component 1 that is solvent divided by uh, n 1 plus n 2 binary solution. So, moles of a solvent plus moles of solute total moles. Okay. So, we need n 1 and n 2. Okay. So, n 2 we can figure it out right there as a unknown that is m 2 divided by 40, 40 gram per mole. So, weight of the solute divided by molecular weight of the solute. So, that will give me moles of solute. What about N 1? For that we need the molecular weight and that would be 96 plus 18. Oh, that comes out to be 114. So, that is convenient. So, N 1 is simply 1. Take this information, put it in this equation and that would be 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus m 2 by 40. Uh, now, simply doing a little bit of algebra just uh, uh, subtracting numerator from denominator we will get 0 0.8 divided by 1 minus 0 0.8 equal to 1 plus 1 plus m 2 by 40 minus 1. So, that is 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.2 that is 4, 4 is equal to 1 by m 2 by 40. So, this is now a simple equation to solve m 2 is simply coming out to be out to be 40 by 4. So, the answer is simply 10 gram. Okay. Let us discuss one last problem for this uh, section okay. 2.19 the next problem. A solution containing 30 gram of non volatile solute uh, exactly 90 gram of water has a vapor pressure of 2.8 kilo Pascal at 298 Kelvin. Further 18 gram of water is then added to the solution and the new vapor pressure becomes 2.9 kilo Pascal at 298 Kelvin. Calculate molar mass of the solute vapor pressure of water at 298 uh, degree Kelvin. Okay. So, in basically we have a two solution, we have to work with two solution, the solution 1 is 30 gram of non volatile solute, solute in 90 gram water, 90 gram water and for this solution the vapor pressure is 2.8 kilo Pascal. And we have the second solution. The second solution is just prepared by adding 18 gram of water in this solution. So, the amount of solute remain same. This is a th still 30 gram of solute in now we have added 18 gram of water. So, amount of water becomes 108 gram water and the resultant solution has a vapor pressure of 2.9 uh, kilo Pascal. Okay. Now, he is asking what is uh, molar mass of solute? So, molecular weight of solute and he is asking vapor pressure of water. So, vapor pressure of pure solvent. So, we have two unknown and we can get two equation from these two 
solution. So, let us go back to our Rolle's law. Rolle's law is P 1 is equal to x 1 P 1 0. Okay, and what is x 1? x 1 is moles of component 1 divided by total moles. Binary system only two components. Okay, and we are given only masses. So, we need to convert uh, this information the mass given to moles. Okay. So, 90 gram of water. So, that is the molecular weight of water is 18. So, we have simply 5 moles. So, n 1 is 5. What about n 2? n 2 we are given 30 gram of solute and uh, the uh, molecular weight is unknown that is what we have to figure it out. So, we will just put uh, moles of uh, solute in terms of molecular weight of solute. So, that would be 30 gram divided by molecular weight of solute multiply by ok. So, this is x 1. Now, we can take this and put it in here and we get P 1 is equal to 5 divided by 5 plus 30 the molecular weight of solute multiplied by P 1 0 and, and that is equal to 2.8 kilo Pascal and so we are going to calculate P 1 0 also in kilo Pascal. Now, same equation we can set it up for the second solution and that would be 2.9 kilo Pascal is equal to uh, x 1. So, in this case now to calculate x 1, uh, the amount of water present is 108 gram and that is conveniently is 6 moles. So, uh, n 1 is 6. So, x 1 is going to be 6 plus 6. Uh, divided by 30 by molecular weight of sol uh, solute multiplied by P 1 0. So, we have uh, two equations and two unknown. Simply divide equation 1 by equation 2 to remove one of the unknown. So, we get uh, 2.8 divided by 2.9 and that is equal to uh, 5 divided by 5 plus 30 divided by molecular weight of solute divided by this whole thing. So, that would be multiplying 6, 6 plus 30 by molecular weight of 2. So, now this equation has one variable, one equation, unknown. Okay. So, we can set it up this easily 6 plus 30 by m, m the molecular weight of solute divided by 5 plus 30 divided by molecular weight of 2 is equal to 28 into 6 divided by 2.9 multiplied by 5 and this is uh, 2.8 multiplied by 6 16.8 and 2.9 multiplied by 5 that is 14.5. Uh, okay. Now, again uh, subtracting numerator from denominator, we can simplify the whole thing and we will get 6 plus 30 divided by molecular weight of solute minus divided by 5 plus 30 molecular weight of solute minus 6 minus 30 uh, molecular weight of solute equal to 16.8 divided by 14.5 minus 16.8. So, this simply cancels out and we get from here uh, 6 plus 30 divided by molecular weight 
2 divided by minus 1 equal to 16.8 divided by minus uh, 2.3. Now, this can be solved 16.8 divided by 2.3 is going to give me 16.8 divided by 2.3 is equal to 7.3 minus 7.3 minus goes to other side becomes plus 6 goes to another side becomes 1.3 and I get 30 divided by molecular weight is equal to 1 point. So, molecular weight becomes simply 30 divided by 1.3. So, we got our answer that is 30 divided by 1.3. So, it is approximately 23 within the, uh, 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 the rounding error. Okay, now, we have molecular weight. So, using this I can uh, put all this information right in here and I can calculate P 1 0. Okay. So, that I will, I will leave it as a uh, exercise should not be a problem at all to finish this problem.